Hi guys, today I want to show you um, how I got started on my perspective project. That's what you guys are going to be doing um, on your own in math and art class. So first, I drew a couple of example, um, like I started here with this, and then I don't remember why I gave this one up. Oh, I thought maybe this was too steep and I wasn't sure like how I could put buildings along it. And I also thought the horizon was maybe too close to the edge of the paper. So I created some others. Here I have one that has like a beach on one side with maybe a boardwalk and um, some buildings on the other side. I thought, what if I make my paper be um, portrait instead of landscape? And so I tried this. And then the one that I ended up sticking with is this one here that also has the beach along one side and you can see like my um, vanishing point is kind of off to the right a little bit so it's sort of on an angle and this was going to be weird if I was trying to like make buildings on this side but since you're going to have a nature on one side I decided to make the beach over here on this side and make my like high rises and um, like beach houses or whatever along here. So for the math part Obviously, I'm not done. This is not a completed project. Um, but for the math part, I need you, um, I want you to put in two buildings that are scale copies. One's a scale copy of the other. I put mine right next to each other, which actually I think makes it look kind of boring. It would be more interesting if they were spread out a little more with something else in between. Um, that might be something I would change in the future. So. Um, the way I did this was these other buildings were not here. I started with this. I measured like a nice whole number of centimeters from the vanishing point, which is also, by the way, the center of dilation. That's why it's labeled with a C. Um, so I said I'm going to have mine be six centimeters to eight centimeters is my first building. So this was building one. Then um, I thought, well, a scale factor of two is kind of boring or three. Uh, a scale factor of a half would make it smaller, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to put anything really small here, so I knew I wanted to make it bigger. So I decided to do one and a half for my scale factor. So instead of six centimeters from the vanishing point, uh, six times one and a half would be nine centimeters, and eight times one and a half would be 12. I also wanted another like whole centimeters. I wanted it to equal a whole number of centimeters, so that worked out great. But then, uh, when I decided how tall my building was going to be, um, I just like drew a, a random line and then went back and measured it and it was 2.4. So multiplying that by one and a half got me the height of this building. Um, and actually, let me back up. I made this 2.4 centimeters and then I drew, I used like my diagonal line here that goes like my ray from the center of dilation out. Or I think in art you're calling it like an orthogonal. Um, so I used that to line up the other vertical lines of my building and then when I went back and measured them and did the math it turned out that like this taller building uh, side was one and a half times the height of this smaller building and then the taller side over here the one that's closer to the viewer is also one and a half times the height of the closer building wall um, on the smaller building. So I didn't have to measure those, like it just worked out that way because of math. So that was cool. Um, and then I also did the top of the building, like where the roof would be. I just drew the line in because that is like my orthogonal that would go all the way to my center of dilation or to my vanishing point. But when I measured that, what do you know, my larger building had a one and a half um, time, was one and a half times as long as my original building. So on your buildings, um, you could write in like really light in pencil your measurements and then eventually you're gonna go back and erase them because you don't want them to be on your final copy. Instead, you're gonna use this fancy transparency paper that we're getting so fond of. And it's kind of hard to see because of the lights. So let me try this. So you can kind of see, um, also I used like one that was kind of dirty transparency paper that I couldn't get clean. You can see there's like other stuff on it. It looks kind of pinkish. 
because um, I knew none of you were going to want that one. So you can see, oh, you can also see through <laughs> to the screen underneath. But um, so in my dry erase marker, I mean my wet erase marker, I put in the center of dilation or the vanishing point, and then I just did dotted lines to where my two figures are. And notice I didn't outline the whole entire building, like I didn't do the side or the roof or anything. I just did the quadrilateral that makes up the front of the building. And I labeled all of the points. Then I listed the corresponding points down here. You will do that too. I indicated what my scale factor was. You will do that too. And then these little math problems all around are showing like what the original, so say this one, FG is 2.4 times 1.5 equals 3.6, and that's JK. So that shows, you can follow along here, FG, this was um, 2.4 centimeters, times the scale factor of one and a half equals 3.6 centimeters, that's the height of this one. So this would be, once I had all this on my um, transparency sheet, this is where I would go back and erase it all on the page underneath, and then, uh, start like making the page underneath a little bit more detailed and a little prettier, you know, make it look more like a piece of art and then leave the math for up here. So things you need, uh, two quadrilaterals, they don't have to be so close to each other. You need to um, point out where your center of dilation is. You can label it with some other letter. It does not have to be C. Use dotted lines along the orth diagonals um, to get to your two figures and then write in the math that shows the four sides of your quadrilaterals and how they relate to each other using your scale factor. Uh, tell me what your scale factor is and list the corresponding points, points that are corresponding to each other. So like G is corresponding to K in the new one or you could say G and G prime, D and D prime and so on if you wanted to use um, the prime notation. Okay, um, I think that is it. Have fun.